just after independence, Zimbabwe was engulfed in what is called Gukurahundi. Over 20,000 Bantus were killed. This is a video which you can watch uh, Gukurahundi and Robert Mugabe's moments of madness. Let us discuss uh, this heart-wrenching phenomenon and suggest a solution of why this happens. More evidence of the Gukurahundi issue. You can follow this uh, tweet uh, here, Peter Godwin. Almost a million Bantus slaughtered each other. Hutu and Tutsi are socio-economic and socio-political categories. These are not tribes. Who created these categories? Why are our leaders still sticking to these categories? Let us follow this uh, search map concerning and understanding the Rwanda genocide of 1984. Very critical and very important as we identify why we are our own worst enemies. Pre-colonial era time, Hutu Tutsi divide existed, but is socio-economic. Hutu Tutsis intermarry, Hutus permitted positions in government, Tutsis rule Rwanda as a monarch. So, in 1800, the Germans took over control of Rwanda, and then the Germans started to divide these people. German takes control of Rwanda, separate Hutus and Tutsis based on appearance, placing Tutsis in power positions, leaving Hutus in a lower class, divide, rule, and control conquer and exterminate colonial era 1916 so we have seen the germans now we see the belgians who took over after the germans the hutus and tutsis divide become more distinct clearly preference is given to tutsis identity cards are issued to distinguish between the two this process of identity card is common in all of africa you look at your first number of your identity card it tells you your tribe and where you come from this is a european construct that is what you must understand then in 1959 1962 Hutu rebellion Hutus frustrated with the tutsi power and colonial treatment re re a rebellion kills 20,000 and forces 100,000 out of the country. Belgians leave and Hutus take control. Now the tables have turned. You see, this is the tables have turned, but people have this animosity that has been created by foreign powers inside them and they've nested it and accepted it. Habri Yamana. Initially, Hutu government last 10 years before Habri Yamana seizes it in a coup, less violence, but Tutsis start bending together in Uganda and create the RPF 1973. So, this is the history which now links the Tutsis in Central Africa and also Paul Kagame and other English speaking Tutsis who were based within the army of Yoweri Museveni. There is a lot there, and there are also external power plays and external forces that are operating between uh, these uh, individuals we must understand this so that we will realize why we have become our own worst enemies then they said there was civil, civil war for three years between Habri Yamanas Hutus and RPF Tutsis and this led to a stalemate and the signing of the Arusha Accord and the integrated army was formulated early 1990s then Habri Yamana was assassinated by a surface surface to air missile the, the plane well, did not crash as what Western media, Europeans, America, and other intelligence have pushed into the world. No, there was a direct assassination. Hutus blamed the Tutsis for President's death. Arusha Accord announced ID cards now are being used to filter Tutsis, now you see, and moderate Hutus from principal Hutu militia. Hutus assemble and start killing Tutsis indiscriminately. It has been triggered. By external engineered system and our brothers and sisters cannot detect the level of what has happened or why they are behaving in the way they are behaving assisted by a radio station rtlm spreading pro hutu propaganda and calling out enemies listen to this radio propaganda you shall see how president Cyril ramaphosa used the same tactic recently i'll show you 100 days of bloodletting almost a million were killed 
on both sides. And then this is what has happened. Who is our enemy? Answer that question. Who is our enemy? Read this blog. Let's, let's continue. Do you know that the elite Tutsi in Burundi committed a genocide in 1972? Some 200,000 to 300,000 mostly Hutu people were raped, tortured, and massacred, while hundreds of thousands more fled to neighboring countries, including Rwanda. The preeminent African scholar Le, Rene Le Marchand described this as a genocide denied and forgotten. You can read his book here and understand the intricacies of how foreign powers are just tweaking a few things here and there and black people turn on each other and massacre each other everywhere where they are found on earth. The, more, the dynamics of violence in Central Africa, Rene Le Marchand, another book of his, you can get this book here from this website. Endowed with natural resources, this is what he says, majestic bodies of fresh water and a relatively mild climate, the Great Lakes region of Central Africa has also been the site of some of the world's bloodiest atrocities in Rwanda, Burundi and the Congo Kinshasa, decades of colonial subjugation, mostly infamously under Belgium's Leopold II, were followed by decades of civil war and that spilled into neighboring countries. When these conflicts lead to horrors such as the 1994 Rwanda genocide, ethnic difference and post-colonial legacies are quickly blamed. This is the trick. But with so much at stake, such simple explanations cannot take the place of detailed, dispassionate analysis. This is what we are doing. It's so sad we are our own worst enemy. We end up asking, are you really an African because of what we have done? Look, during the Civil War, 1967 to 1970, a period of three years, over 3.5 million Biafrans lost their lives, including pregnant women, kids, able-bodied men, were massacred in cold blood by the jihadist state of Nigeria because of independence of Biafra. You can read more from this website. You can see this is Biafra there. Yeah. You see, this is Nigeria. You can see these borders were crafted by Europe. They are not African. When we reason and when we think using these borders, we are Europeans. We are not Africans. We become our own worst enemy created in our mind, in our brains. It's so sad. We are our own worst enemy. Recently, His Excellency President Cyril Ramaphosa deliberately selected specific words during his campaign. He decried about foreigners. In, his, in what he called his country. Immediately following that, black people attacked other black people. You can listen to this video there on this YouTube. It's clear, straightforward. Copy this and listen to his statement. Zambian Observer also commented about it because of the violence that started and the response to xenophobic attacks in South Africa. The Zambians started to, kill, to ban South African Cars, South African business everywhere in Africa, triggered by just one statement. The popular poor mental legacy on African identity is truly a European conditioning training, not an African consciousness. Indeed, this is the model used by millions of Africans. Ingrained into the deepest mental parts is the shameful image. African equals black skin, thick lips, and woolly kinky hair. While this is true, it's not the whole picture. This is only one type. This is another type. This is another type where religion differentiate them. Arab is, this is an African who calls himself an Arab. And this is an African. It's quite clear. You can read this and study Diop. He explains it. This mental image is a European creation because the features which seemed to be more opposite to those of Europe became the archetypical features of the Negro. Thin nose versus thick nose. Kinked hair versus straight hair. Dark skin versus light skin. Thick lips versus thin lips. You can study more and read more from here. These are not Africans. When we use this, we become our own worst enemies. From the video, you, if you watched it, you will notice that the president intentionally stoked the fires of xenophobia. Why did he do this? To get votes. Are we not demonstrating that we are our own worst enemies? You look at that. Xenophobic attack. Discrimination on the rising. Xenophobia attack in 2017. These are Zambians attacking Rwandese 
in terms of their thinking, they think they are Zambians, but that's a construct that was put in them. It appears in his speech, the president clearly states that these people set up businesses. What kind of business? If they sell drugs or other illegal stuff, he is right. Then why did the speech writer not specify why such businesses are allowed to thrive? If they are selling drugs like this or, or like that, these people should be prosecuted and hanged. They should not be put in jail. Drug dealers, drug peddlers, drug pushers, manufacturers of drugs must simply be hanged. Full stop. You can study more about this from this uh, website. So, was His Excellency unaware of the possible impact of his speech? If he was unaware, is he also oblivious to the xenophobic trends that are prevalent in South African society? Why should that xenophobic trend or black-to-black -black crime be prevalent within Africans? Why would an African in an African country call another African a foreigner? We are our own worst enemies. There we are. We can see members of the South African police forces patrol area in Johannesburg where local South African men attacked the shopped owned by people they call foreigners. You can see this is the king, a royal king, who called other Africans foreigners and caused chaos, destruction, burning, killing, and xenophobic attacks in 2015. You can see in 2017, South African students killed five Congolese students, 10 Nigerians, five Gabonese, and 10 Somalis. This is the, the politician against xenophobia. You can watch this fantastic YouTube where he ex explained and everything. Say, watch this fantastic YouTube. Basic history. The current borders of Africa are European borders, not African. So the countries defined by those borders are European countries found in Africa. If you base your thinking in that, you, you have been trapped and you cannot be an African. Africans, we are indeed in trouble. Being African have been defined by Europeans and Arabs. We bought this and we now hate ourselves. This is the partitioning and these are the countries. Here are the European countries in Africa. British countries, French countries, German countries, Portuguese countries, Italian countries, but they are still there today as I speak. The African leaders of the Organization of African Union refused to remove these borders. They said we will leave them like that. From this slide, we read what ultimately resulted from the Berlin Conference was a hodgepodge of geometric boundaries that divided Africa into 50 irregular countries. This new map of the continent was superimposed over 1,000 indigenous cultures and regions of Africa. The new countries lacked rhyme or reason and divided coherent groups of people and merged together disparate groups who really did not get along together. Our leaders were supposed to know this and then work hard to make us get along together. So who is our greatest enemy? Colonialism, enslavement and self-hate? No, it is us. Because we do not remember these segregation laws. Whites only. Danger. Natives, Indians, colors. If you enter these premises at night, you will be listed as missing. Armed guards shoot on sight. Savage dogs devour the cops. You have been warned. This is still the condition and the operation in this world. And we have forgotten. And we have attacked. And we continue to attack each other. What can we do? Some scholars like uh, Chester H. Higgins teach us that we are not Africans because we are born in Africa. We are Africans because Africa is born in us. This is identity. This is what we should have. One scholar again, he, we, we look at him, there are very few real Africans today listening to the speech of the South African leader. He still identifies other Africans as foreigners. Think Akimani Nehusi said, if we are unclear about identity, we will be unclear about everything else. Hence, we will kill each other so easily. Unfortunately, many Africans on this earth have no clear identity power. They don't know who they are. They think that they are special than other black people and forget their own enemy. We are all fighting to remove useless African leaders who have failed us. Consider this fact that in 1867, two years after Africans were freed from slavery, in quotation marks, indeed, 98% of African Americans worked for whites. In 2011, even with a black president, 98% still work for white people, with another 33% of them in incarcerated, in jail, and many others unemployed. In Africa, our leaders sell out to highest bidders like China. 
Millions of Africans do not know their identity. Thus, they hate each other with passion and kill each other and they leave their enemies to control them. This is what has happened all over and our leaders are at the top. We conclude by quoting from this website, AfricanHolocaust.net, African Race. The primary purpose of identity is security. The rationale is we share something in common and have greater group interest and we will be more likely to look out for each other because of that shared common relationship. Identity may exist along religious lines, ideological, geographical, ethnic, or national. In every case, the bond between people sharing identity has in it security factor. I know you because we have this common thing. I can more trust you because of this, these shared uh, features. Be an African and shun self-hate. Otherwise, we are our own worst enemies. Subscribe to Ashani Hamiti Hebrew Ethics. Contact us on this email. This is Priestia Rabbi Elem Tumizulu as teaching us that ancient Egyptians, ancient Ethiopians, ancient people were black just like this. This is ancient Egyptian headed vest and there is the uh, closer exactly with the same. So where, why do you say another person is a foreigner? When we are all one, down with being our own worst enemy. Thank you. Have a good day.